Okay, welcome to Psalm 23. Uh, thoughts, readings and thoughts. Again, uh, seeking to find help and hope for the journey ahead for just everyday life. Uh, some of us find ourselves in uh, deeper water than others, but you know, Psalm 23 really is applicable to all of life for all of us all the time. But may our reading of this and our thoughts of this be helpful to help you in whatever quagmire you find yourself, whatever cloud you find yourself under, whatever valley you are in. Again, this is part of our, our ministry with the idea of um, you know, helping one another, uh, counseling and stuff, but this is uh, applicable to, to all. It's applicable to me uh, on a daily basis as well. So Psalm 23, let me just read a piece here from, um, again, from uh, uh, John Hunter. And he says, and this is from uh, Christ in the Psalms. He says, see the fresh, crisp relevance of these words of David. Fresh, crisp relevance. Notice that all the pronouns are singular and they're personal. Hmm, do you notice that? The Lord is my, I shall not. He makes me, he leads me, he restores my, he leads me, though I walk. It could read the Lord is our, or we shall not want. That would have been true. But the truth would have lost its cutting edge. The penetrating blessing of this psalm is the personal touch. My shepherd, he makes me, he leads me, thou art with me. There's something unique in sensing the individual tension of the shepherd for each one of his sheep. Counting through the psalm in the King James Version, we find that the words I, my, we occur 17 times. So in these six verses, short verses, we have the personal relationship emphasized 30 times. What a thought. What a thought. All right. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. There, ha, with all those personal pronouns, right? It is about me. It is written to me. It is powerful, and it should be helpful to me all the days of my life, right? All right, so this is uh, number six. And again, so the first one, the Lord is. Second, my. Third, shepherd. Fourth, I shall not want. Fifth, he makes me lie down in green pastures. I'm content. I'm well fed. I'm protected. He's provided for me. He's protected me. Two great things. Here it comes to the sixth one. He leads me beside the still or the placid waters. <clears throat> right? The waters are not roaring. The waters are not rippling. The waters are not uh, swirling. Calm waters. Doesn't that remind you of Mark 4? You know, the, the, they're in the boat and... Uh, the storm is terrible and the boat is filling and the twelve are worrying and Jesus is asleep. You know the story. They finally, yeah, yeah, let's wake Jesus. They wake Jesus up and say, Lord, do you not care that we perish? Do you not care that we perish? Jesus says to the wind and the waves, stop. And immediately, boom. And they go, whoa, 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 whoa. Even the wind and the waves obey him. <laughs> wow. Wow. Calm water. So, you know, my, my thought here is this. We sin. Sin vexes our soul. Sin causes guilt. Sin causes shame. Sin puts rocks in our backpack. Sin burdens us down. Sin causes storms. Mm -hmm. And we get tossed to and fro and we get 
loaded and we get laden and we get beat down, we lose our peace. Peace be still. To the window ways, peace be still. We lose our peace because of sin. Because now we've got issues with God, we've got issues with people, we've got issues with ourselves, right? We lose our peace. So this whole issue of peace, he says in Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3, he says, You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for Yah, the Lord, is everlasting strength. Okay? So, you know, what's the, the antidote to storms and to turbulent waters? Look to Jesus. Look to Jesus. What's he say? Whose mind is stayed on you? Who allowed the storm? Jesus. Who controls the storm? Jesus. Who can stop the storm? Jesus. Right? His mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. So trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord forever, it says in verse 4. For in y'all the Lord is everlasting strength. Verses 3 and 4, Isaiah 26. In the Lord is everlasting strength. Hmm. So again, I mean, the, the source of peace is our shepherd, right? Remember back, it makes me lie down in green pastures, right? So then a, a couple more pieces on it. So in, in Romans chapter uh, 5, verse 1, he said, therefore, having peace with God. Well, now, what he's really talking about in that one in particular is the fact that we have come to faith in him. We've cast our care on him. We've, we've gotten saved. Therefore, having been justified by faith, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. So if you don't have peace, it might be go back to where are you at with that pronoun in lesson two, my. The Lord is my shepherd. I mean, is it really true? Are you really saved? If you are saved, there's a peace that comes over you, a peace that says in Philippians chapter 4, a peace that passes understanding. Your situation, your circumstances haven't changed, but there's a peace that takes hold. The waters, although they may be literally turbulent, but yet in those waters, turbulent waters, you sleep. What's Jesus doing in the storm? Sleeping. So the storm, what, what's puts Peter doing when they're going to kill him? He's in prison, sleeping. What are Paul and Silas doing when in prison and they've been beat? What are they doing? Singing. Hmm. Yeah, right, 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 okay. John chapter 14. Let not your heart be troubled. Turbulent waters. I mean, you may have, your situation may be turbulent. But that doesn't mean your head, your soul, your life has to be. There can be a calm. Let not your heart be troubled. Do you believe in God? Believe also in me. Right? I go to prepare a place for you. And then a little later on in that chapter, in verse 27, he says, uh, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives. Give I to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Do not let it be afraid. Okay? So again, eyes on Jesus. Trust Jesus. And one more here, and that's in John uh, 16, 33. He says, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. You don't have peace. You're not going to get peace... By buying something. You're not going to get peace by eating something, you know, overeating. You're not going to get peace by being a workaholic. You're not going to get peace by uh, winning the lottery. You're not going to get peace from people or things. He says that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. The water will be upset. Be a good cheer. I've overcome the world. So he leads me beside still waters. And so, you know, actually the waters, the literal waters, the literal waters, your literal circumstances may be somewhat volatile. Yes, they might be. But eyes on Jesus, trusting Jesus, knowing Jesus, realizing that he has allowed and he is controlling and he will limit and he will stop it in time, brings a calm. He leads me beside still waters. Right? Wow. So get your eyes on Jesus. Know for sure that you're saved, but then understand that he is the source of peace, and he can give you peace in the storm, so that even though the storm be raging all around you, 
there can be peace, just like when he slept in the boat, in the storm. So may you find peace in Jesus. All right? See, till next time.